Hi there, I'm Brian for the Lincolnwood Library here today to talk to you about backing up your files. Lots of us are using technology more and more and more, and doing that, we generate a ton of data. From pictures and videos to documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and more, we need to be careful with our data so that we don't lose it. There's often a lot of data we don't care about, like temporary files and things like screenshots we only need for a little bit, but there is lots of data we actually do care about that we want to preserve. Today we'll talk about how you can back up that kind of data, including practical demos on some of the services that we'll go over. Let's get started. All of us are generating a lot of digital media these days and we don't want to lose it. It may be stored on any of a number of different types of devices and media from tablets and phones to hard drives, flash drives, solid state drives, memory cards, disks. Most of these media and devices are really reliable but they can and sometimes do fail. There is this organization called LOX, which has an abbreviation, lots of copies keep stuff safe. And as a general rule of thumb, it is a really good approach to make sure that you don't lose any important documents or pictures. Now, other advice, says that your copies should probably be set up with an on-site backup, an off-site backup, and then of course you want to do maintenance on your main devices to try to prevent them from failing. So let's first talk about web services that you can use as remote offsite backups, starting with offerings from Amazon. Amazon Drive and Amazon Photos are two great products that you can use for online offsite backups. They're very similar, so I'll talk through both. Amazon Drive works for any type a file, whether it's documents, music, photos, video, you can upload and see those files elsewhere, download them, preview them, share them. This is it in Google Play. They have an app. They are also in the Apple iOS app store for iPhones and iPads. And of course, the Amazon app store for Kindle tablets. Amazon Photos is very similar, but only does photos and videos. It starts with five gigabytes of full resolution photo and video storage. Amazon Drive starts with that same five gigabytes of storage, this time for any type of file, and there are paid plans beyond that including with Amazon Prime. So Photos and Dry are available in the three major app stores. Again, Google Play, Apple, and Amazon. For Drive and then Photos, Google Play, Apple, and Amazon. So we'll do a quick preview. This is Amazon Drive. I'm logged into the library's account. You can upload any file or a folder and it connects with your file manager program on your computer to pick files to upload. You can see on the left a little menu and you can browse through your files. If you have files, you would be able to download them and delete them. You can see the trash. You can see your recent files and all of your files. So it's a very simple interface and with their apps on every platform, you should be able to access your content wherever you go if you need a fresh copy. Amazon Photos, again, the five gigabytes, they're full resolution. There are plans if you need 
more storage. It integrates with the ability to print photos as well and other benefits. This is the photos interface, which is very similar. It shows you previews. We've just got one photo in here. You can see different size previews of photos. If you have a whole bunch, this will be great to go through them. You can see if you have shared the content, you can make albums. And if you've deleted a photo, you can see your trash. Again, you can get prints of the photos using Amazon as well. And then if you have Prime, the shipping would be very fast. You can see and manage your storage using their storage manager. And you can see options for updating, upgrading to more storage. Amazon Photos has a desktop application for Windows and Mac that allows you to upload the photos really easily. This is really the only major platform other than Google Play, the Apple iOS store, and the Amazon App Store. So they really have everything covered. You just drag and drop, you can upload, and it avoids duplicates. You can back up and restore. So these two services are very similar, and Amazon has this page that takes you through the differences. So Amazon Photos only does photos and videos. Amazon Drive does basically any other type of file. Both allow you to upload, download, preview. You can see the photo gallery. You can see your videos. You can access them on basically every device. You can share photos. You can make groups and albums, and those are the differences between Amazon Photos and Amazon Drive. Another great service to use to back up is Apple's iCloud. It's built into every Apple device, and it starts with five gigabytes of free storage. So you see how they integrate it on a laptop an iPhone and an iPad. They show you how much of your storage you have used and what it is used on. You can back up photos. You can back up all sorts of other content as well, messages and applications and other files. You can upload any type of file to iCloud, but it's really best for the content that you create on mobile automatically. Things like apps that don't exactly have file types like PDF and JPEG photos that most people are familiar with. It integrates with apps that are already on your phone. They automatically send content into your iCloud account. You can share with your family. You can share albums. And again, you can do any type of file. They call it iCloud Drive, where you can upload just any type of file these look like some PDF documents that have been created, or maybe they were made in Apple's document creation program. You can access them through iCloud.com on any device or the dedicated files app or in apps on iPads and iPhones allows you to make folders and to assign colors, all sorts of different things. You can tag files. You can see those same locations on mobile if you're working from a laptop where you created them. They have sharing as well, although this is probably not going to be as easy as sharing 
content with services like Google Drive and Dropbox. The new Files app on iPad and iPhone makes working with iCloud Drive for any type of file much easier. Your apps can upload content into your iCloud. So content like your contacts and your calendar, your notes, and a bunch of other different content can be taking up your Apple iCloud space. Pages, numbers, and keynotes are some of those apps that can create that content. It can back up your text messages with iMessage as well. Although a lot of people like to delete this content frequently, it will very quickly take up a lot of space, especially if you're doing pictures and videos back and forth between your friends and family. It can also automatically back up your entire devices. This will take up a lot of storage and you'll want to manage the settings of this very carefully, but it's really nice that you can store a whole backup secure in the cloud. If your device breaks, you buy a new one, it's stolen, you can log in to the same account and use a backup to restore fresh, just like new, from that backup that you created. And of course, like most services now, there's two-factor authentication to make sure that it's you when you are logging in. You have to verify by some other way, whether it's a code or a notification on your device through some sort of authentication, whether it's through an app or a notification like this. And they have different storage plans, again, starting at five gigabytes for free and they have these tiers. These tiers could change at any time and the cost per month can change at any time. So Apple iCloud allows you to back up your content as well. It's really best for people using iPads and iPhones. Another backup service is a box whose name is very similar to Dropbox. Box does cloud backup of your files to the internet, any type of file. They start out with 10 gigabytes of free storage, which is pretty large. That's about two thirds of Google Drive's limit. You see their interface looks pretty simple. You can back up any type of file. They integrate with other services. You see Google Drive, Slack, and Microsoft Office shown here. You can recover files and share. Here is a little more about sharing. You can email. It's a pretty simple interface. They have link sharing as well. You can access on any device and you can share projects. Again, this is stored in the cloud, the internet. This is an off-site backup you can access that backup on any device. Any type of content, you can see the files and get it. They have all sorts of different advanced features. Here are their plans. They've got an individual plan, but really Box is more oriented at businesses. Again, that 10 gigabyte storage limit for general files and spreadsheets and pictures, the vast majority of files should be under 250 megabytes. They allow you only to have one version. They'll keep that up to date with things you change and upload, but only one version. The paid plan allows you to see multiple versions. They've got standard two-factor authentication and sharing and integration. That starts off free or the personal Pro plan is $10 a month. The business plans 
they charge per user per month and they have a discount right now you see in gray the usual prices they start off at 100 gigabytes of storage which is great for teams of up to 10 users and they just add more and more and more features so box is another service that you could try individually for free you could use with 10 gigabytes of storage another backup service to consider is carbonite carbonite has both home and business solutions they focus on backing up entire computers rather than individual files as dropbox and google drive are best at you see they have lots of customers and they have features like preventing file deletion and they help prevent from ransomware they claim to be easy to use and they're secure you install the software and it backs up basically all of your files from a computer into their system they have multiple different plans and you see their home computer plan starts at six dollars per month build for an entire year they allow you to do one to three computers they have a limited free trial they also support external hard drives if you're doing an on-site backup to a different device and that free trial is for 15 days the backup amount is unlimited you can recover your files and they include support so this is carbonite total computer backup dropbox is one of the good options for backing up your files online they have been in this business for a very long time and they're one of the services that is more focused just on the pure act of backing up your files they're not so much integrating with tools to manipulate and edit your files although they do have some of that you see on their site they're just talking about productivity they allow you to install their program on up to i believe three computers in the free accounts and then the computers automatically synchronize files anytime you save so dropbox is really good for people who are using a limited number of devices over and over so maybe you have a laptop and a desktop and then either a tablet or a phone again three devices they let you back up and synchronize on for free so they have their plans they've got professional and plus two terabytes is a ton of storage and three terabytes is a third more than that they have monthly or yearly billing here is dropbox's free plan they allow you to have two gigabytes of storage for free which is a pretty small amount that's roughly 2000 photos where a lot of other services are giving anywhere from five gigabytes to 15 gigabytes and you see some more information about their applications they have the desktop app they've got the website and their apps on ios and android they do that synchronization you can undelete files from the web and see version history so if you realize the change you made was actually bad you can undo that using dropbox 
So if you're okay with a small amount of storage space to start, you can even start with Dropbox for free. It's a great option for backing up your files. Another great option for backing up online is Google Drive. Google Drive, of course, from Google of search engine fame, they have apps on just about every platform accessing the same account so you can see everything everywhere. They integrate with the ability to collaborate and create documents as well. You see some examples here. They have really powerful search features as you would expect from them and they work on just about every device. They're ranked highly. And here are some more of the features. So you get 15 gigabytes of free space, which is roughly 15,000 photos worth. And if you use Google's document creation applications like Google Slides, Google Documents, and Google Sheets for spreadsheets, those documents do not count against the 15 gigabytes. Just any storage space you use for other file types like pictures, PDF documents, anything else counts against that storage space. We'll talk about Google Photos later. That 15 gigabytes also is shared if you use Gmail and Google Photos. So that is one drawback, but it is nice to have everything integrated as well. You can save attachments from email directly to your Google Drive. The search is really powerful. And again, Google Photos uses that same storage space. They have all sorts of apps and beyond just docs, sheets, and slides, they allow you to make web forms and all sorts of other content in your Google Drive. So there is an Android app you can install for any of your devices, whether it is an Android tablet or any Android phone. It also works in Apple's iOS store, both on iPhone and they have a nice big iPad version. So to sign in, you go to accounts.google.com. It may be a little different on your mobile devices with apps installed. You type in the email address of your account. You can either link an existing email address if you don't want to sign up for Google's Gmail email service, or you can create a brand new email address. I am using my library account, which is not a Gmail address. So you enter that email address, then you hit next, and then your password. And you hit next. And there you go. It took me to my account this time. If you just go to drive.google.com, it will take you to Google Drive. Now, if you need to switch between the different parts of your Google Drive account, they have this grid button up here. You click that and you see all of the different services that Google has. You can switch over to Photos or Gmail or Calendar, YouTube, all of their different services. Your new button up top is where you can create new folders or you can create a new document and it has kind of a version of Microsoft Word online. 
There's also a version of Google Sheets. So Google Drive, along with being a backup, can be a centralized place for making new things as well, which is really great. So Google Sheets is very good. It's very comparable to Microsoft Excel. And Google Slides is very similar to Microsoft PowerPoint. If you're familiar with that, you will pick this up. So you can organize your content in folders. For example, I can look at classes that I have created working from home. These are documents that I used for them. You can see where you are in your Google Drive at the top. I'll go back to the beginning. They give you recent files that you have worked on. And you can just scroll down and see everything that you have. Maybe I was looking for a document that I used related to the library of things. The Lincolnwood Library offers checkout of items beyond just books. We do Wi-Fi hotspots and Roku's and all sorts of different things. So if I forgot where something was, the search is very powerful. I can type a name of a file that I think I named something, or if I remember a file type, I can click that I'm looking for a PDF, and there are the PDFs. Or I could search for content within files, and we were thinking about buying another Roku for 2020, so it pulled up correctly our 2020 planning document that I stored in Google Drive. Your left side shows you different sections of your account, so I can see files that have been shared with me. Recent ones that I have worked on, they give you the time range, Files that I have starred, I haven't. Things that I have trashed. My drive is always the beginning of your account. There are a couple different ways to upload content to back it up using Google Drive. You can press New and then File Upload, and it will pull up your program for finding files and folders on your computer, File Explorer on PCs, and Finder on Macs. And you just find the document that you're interested in. I'm going to use this example document. And then you click Open. And you see in the lower right here, it quickly uploads that document. You could have selected multiple. It would upload all at once, and then they are in your Google Drive. So if I want to find that for use later, I can search for example document, and here it is. When you need to use a file, you can click on it, and then there are options at the top. You can remove it. You can view a preview. You can share it with someone else or get a link to email to someone. You can move it to a folder within your Google Drive. Or the three dots typically means more and you could download to a new computer to work on it, see versions and details, rename it, and you can see the location if something you have searched for is within a folder. On the left side of your Google Drive, you can see your storage. I've up uploaded some videos and pictures and a lot of documents. So it has used up 3.3 gigabytes. 
of the free 15 gigabytes of storage. 15 gigabytes is one of the larger amounts that any backup service gives out. So that's just a little bit about Google Drive. Again, you can download it for any device or just use it on your laptop or desktop computer. It integrates with other Google services. And I'm just going to click on my initial and sign out. Google Photos is great for backing up your photos and videos. And I'm demoing it here on an iPhone. It's really best on iPhones. You can see that they are changing their storage quality policy in June 2021. I will dismiss that. So you see your photos of my baby daughter here, for example. You can upload automatically. So I can press my profile here and it shows as soon as I press into the app that it starts backing up and it can help me to organize photos that I may be able to delete since they're backed up to help me free up space. I can search for photos. I can see people. I can see places or things. Maybe I can search for downtown Chicago. And it pulls up photos that I took downtown. I can share photos very easily. I can press on a photo and the up arrow share button and it pulls up my standard sharing options. This app also integrates editing photos. I've got levels here. I can adjust with filters and all sorts of editing options. So Google Photos is one of the best applications for backing up your photos and videos. Microsoft's OneDrive is another option for backing up your files online. You can access anywhere and they emphasize sharing and collaboration features which plays into Microsoft 365, their subscription service. You see the plans here. You can get OneDrive standalone for this price that they can change at any time. OneDrive starts off free with five gigabytes. So it's between services like Dropbox, which only starts with two gigabytes, and Google Drive, which starts with 15 gigabytes. You can upload any type of file to OneDrive, including pictures, and it integrates with Office apps, including online versions very well. And it uses your Microsoft account. Let's take a closer look at Dropbox, which is one of the more popular of these services. Again, it starts out with two gigabytes free and it kind of focuses on just the backing up of your files. So you can go to dropbox.com slash login and type the email address of your account and the password. And press sign in. Then it will take you to your account. You can see your account and there are sections on the left can look at all files to see everything that I have in my Dropbox. Now, this is an old file. The library has been renovated since this floor plan. 
You can, of course, delete things. You press that three dot button and delete. And then it asks, are you sure? You can navigate into folders and subfolders. You can create new folders to organize things. Maybe I want to put some pictures in here. I'll create that. And the folder, of course, starts out empty. If I want to upload a document or a picture to a specific folder, I can go to Upload Files, and it pulls up my menu for finding files on my device. I've got a picture I prepared, the library logo. I'll click that and open. And then it thinks and it uploads it into this folder. They integrate the ability to share. I can press share and then you type in the email address of the person that you want to send it to. With Dropbox, they are not required to have an account. You can also share a simple link, which is even easier. Go back to all files and I want to create one more folder as an example. So we have these options on the right. I'll create a new folder and I'll call it December 2020. Create. I have a few files that I want to upload here. So I can go to Upload Files. And the library now has curbside pickup. I want that document as a Word document and as a PDF in this folder. And I also want a draft of this class that you're watching now. So you can do Microsoft Word documents. You can do PDFs. You can do video files. You can also upload more than one file at once. On PCs, hold Control and click multiple files. On a Mac, hold Command and click multiple files. So I selected those, I press Open, and it uploads the files. At the bottom here, we can see the progress. The backup of this class is a fairly large file, so it's taking a bit. The other two files are small, so they should not take very long. So I successfully uploaded those. I can hit close and there you go. Now I showed you deleting a file before the three dot button also shows a whole bunch more options. You can see version history. Dropbox allows you to have multiple versions. So that is really nice. Now, if you need to download a file, you can do that from here. You press download and it downloads it to your computer. It's very simple. You could also select multiple and then press your download button. It does download those as a zip file, which you will have to unzip. Go back one more time to all files. There is also the search menu. I can click into search and I'll try to find that video. So it found a couple things. The relevant example is at the top and it has those same options. I am ready to start working from this search. So Dropbox is really clean and simple. It focuses mostly on your files. They do do some integrations with create new file, some custom Dropbox creation. They integrate with Microsoft Word and Google Drive with Docs, Sheets, and Slides. So that can help you to get started creating content. So that is a Dropbox. It's a great option for backing up your file. Now let's go through using File Explorer to manually back up things onto 
a flash drive, or a hard drive. On a Mac, you'll use the Finder application, which looks very different, but functions quite similarly. I've got a simple large flash drive here. External hard drives are often more rugged, but flash drives work too and are more portable. So on the desktop here, I have some files. These are the ones that I am going to back up to my device. To start backing up the files manually, I have to open up File Explorer, which is this manila file folder icon. The Finder icon on a Mac looks like kind of a two-face, happy face smiling at you. So here the manila file folder is File Explorer on PC, and it shows different files that I have been working on. On the left are locations that I can browse to on my computer. I can go, for example, maybe to the downloads folder and I can browse within subfolders to find the things that I want to back up. At the top of File Explorer are a bunch of great controls for helping you to select and move content. For example, I could select all and that highlights everything and then I could copy. But the files that I want to move are on the desktop. So I'll click through to desktop and here are the items that are on the desktop. I can select the items. If you press the first one, hold your shift key, press the last one. You can use the control key and then click certain files to remove or add extra items to your selection. Once you have highlighted your files, you can copy them. There's a copy button here, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Control C on a PC or Command C on a Mac. So that's the first step. I've copied the files from their source. Next, I have to go to the location of the flash drive or hard drive that I want to put the files in to back them up. So I can click on this PC to see all things that are connected to the computer, including flash drives and hard drives. This is my flash drive. I had previously put a folder of a few songs in here in that music folder. I just click in the blank area here and I can either press the paste button or control V on a Mac, it's command V, but I'll just press here and there we go. It backed up those items. Now I'm going to go back to the desktop. A hallmark of a good backup scheme is that you are doing it frequently to make sure that the content you have backed up is up to date. If you've made any changes or if you've added things. So again, I'm going to select the files and this time I want to show a different method of putting them into the device that I'm backing them up to. I can drag and drop files by clicking and holding and then under my locations here, the flash drive, and you see it says copy to. As soon as you see that and the name of your flash drive or hard drive, you can press. And then you may see menus like this. These are the same files I used last time. So it's asking if I want to replace them or what I want to do. And you'll want to replace the files in the destination when you're doing a subsequent backup to make sure that the content, the files are up to date. So I press and it puts them in there. And you see it did a copy so that the files are still in their original location. 
Again, Mac Finder works very similarly. It looks very different, but it does the same thing. It is the digital equivalent of your hands that allows you to move things and to copy things to create a backup. So we've gone through all of the services and we've done some practical demos. So I want to talk about all the ways that you might evaluate them before picking which to use and to summarize the different services. So you'll want to evaluate services based on their price. Many start free. They may be freemium, which means they start free, but then certain features require payment, or they may require payment up front. If you need that freemium feature and you think it's worth it, you might pay. Or if you already know that a certain advanced feature is for you, you might pay up front. A lot of people use the free services. The availability of these options is incredibly important. If they are on the platform that you're using, whether it's Google Play or iOS, Amazon, Microsoft Windows, Apple Mac OS, also for the free and freemium services, if you think that the service will stay around. There are a lot of startups that come and go. Has the service that you're considering been around for a while? What is backed up is also a really important question. Most services do any type of file, but some now are specializing to do photos and videos. If you are a super user of photos and videos, it might be best to use something like Amazon Photos or Google Photos. But otherwise, you might consider a general backup service that does any type of file. The number of devices a service lets you use is also important. If you just are on one device, it may not matter. But if you use a ton of different devices, this factor that you can evaluate these online backup services on may matter to you. Most are unlimited. A few have some limits. If you have trouble with content, most of these services have the ability to help you restore file versions back to normal. If they allow you to have multiple versions or exactly how this works is something important to consider. In terms of payment, the types of plans, if it's an individual plan, a family plan, like Apple has many family plans that allow you to share with multiple users, or business plans usually charge per user per month. Integrations with other services are really important. If you use multiple different services, then you might want your backup to integrate with them seamlessly. They may make or break something for your use case. Sharing is also very important. How is it done? Is it by email? Are people required to have accounts? Are there advanced permissions that you have to be dealing with? Or is it easy? And also in the regard of ease, just generally how easy are these backup services to use? Give them a try. You can always delete your account entirely, especially for free services. You have to be able to use the backup service consistently so that you can do regular backups so that your files are always up to date in case something happens. Finally, Different services may have unique features. They may be able to back up an entire computer. They may be an image of the device state, like Apple iCloud backups of iPhone and iPad settings. They may allow you to edit documents along with backing them up. There are a myriad of special unique features in different online backup services, and you'll want to take a look at those and 
evaluate them to determine if one of these services is better than the other for you. Which brings us to a little summary. Amazon Drive is really best for Amazon Prime customers. You're already paying for that benefit. You can use the storage. Amazon Photos for those Amazon Prime users with tons of photos. Apple iCloud is best for people who are on their iPads and iPhones all the time, backing up that content. Box is one of the best online backup companies for business users. Carbonite is really good for backing up an entire computer. Dropbox's automatic synchronization is great, but on a limited number of devices with their free plan. Google Drive is best for people who are just using Google all the time. And Google Photos is really great for Google users with tons of photos. They help you organize and search them. Microsoft OneDrive is best for Office 365 customers. And as we showed, manually backing up your files to flash drives or hard drives is also another option. It's not online. You control it entirely. So it's really best for control freaks. So as you're thinking about how you're going to back up your content, think about what content you have, what factors matter to you, and what services will help you to keep your content backed up and safe. Thanks for watching the Lincolnwood Libraries class on backing your files up. You can see all of our resources at our website, lincolnwoodlibrary.org, including all of our events, quick links to our databases, like lynda.com, where you can do technology training videos using your Lincolnwood Library card. We have a full page of technology training. We can do one-on-one -on -one remote sessions via Zoom for very specific questions. You can go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Lincolnwood Library to see all of our archived content, including our playlist of technology training videos. And of course, you can go to the library catalog where you can search for things you'd like to read or movies you'd like to watch and you can check them out or reserve them and pick them up curbside. Thanks for watching.